Hello. Hi. I've got a delivery for Gio. I'll take that, thank you. Cool. By the way, what is it that y'all do here? We make 100% battery electric vehicles. Very interesting. Would you like to talk to someone about that? That'd be great. Awesome, let's go. Today on The Fast and the Curious, I speak with Gio Sordoni, co-founder and COO of Exos, to learn about commercial EV trucks, including Exos' two newest models. Matt shows off his sandwich making skills, and I get my hands on Exos' community action program to help feed the homeless. XCAP takes everything that we've learned and finds ways to have really big impacts on our community. So let's get this show on the road. Just to warm you up, I was like, very Italian name. I want to hear your best Italian take of your own name. <laughs> I know, I always, I always remember Zach Galifianakis joke where he goes up on stage and he's like, hi everyone, I'm Zach Galifianakis. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, which is how I feel every time. I say my full name on stage or giving speech, but it's Giordano Cerdoni. Geo tends to be easier, yeah. Okay. Really, just honest to, to start, just tell me about Exos and what y'all are up to here. So at its core, Exos is an electric truck company. We're also a lot more than a traditional truck company. We have a suite of services and software that goes along with the truck to help fleets make that transition from diesel to electric. And the mission of the company is to decarbonize transportation. And we do that in what we view as the most important segment that needs to go electric which are those medium and heavy duty trucks, which are disproportionate contributors to greenhouse gas emissions uh, and pollution in general. We want to focus on where we're going to get more bang for our buck from an environmental perspective, which is those medium and heavy duty trucks. Now I was tipped off the insights you got about addressing uh, step vans and delivery trucks is a story about you and Dakota CEO taking maybe like a road trip in what was like the first maybe Exos truck. It was, was it that an 18 wheeler or was it a class eight vehicle? Yeah, so when we first started the company, we decided that what we need to do as a first step is to prove to the world that an electric truck can move 80,000 pounds. That's kind of typically the, the federal uh, maximum okay. for how heavy you can go. And so that's why we settled on building ET1 as a first step in the company, a fully electric class eight tractor. And we brought that vehicle with us around the country and showed it to a bunch of the big fleets that we're now working with today. And they were skeptical at first and they said, hey, we don't see how this technology is gonna to get to a place where it can move 80,000 pounds. And we'd say, well, here are the keys, trucks in your parking lot, let's go take it for a spin. The road trip was informative for a bunch of reasons. A, just opening the door with a lot of those fleets with a big kind of interesting looking product that was different than what they'd seen before. Uh, the second piece was, it was a, a listening tour and saying, where, what do you see as electrifying first? And what we heard from them is, it's those city vehicles because they're up front and close with customers all day long. They're making you know 80 to 150 stops throughout the city. Um, they're driving by all of our schools and neighborhoods and places we live and making a ton of stops. And that stop and go environment is a really good use case for electrification because you're not stopping and starting a, an ICE engine all the time and shutting it down and turning it back on. Exos just displayed, I think at the ACT Expo, two new vehicle platforms. Where are you looking to take the company with those offerings? The way that we use step fans are for uh, smaller packages or boxes. But if you are a delivery company, for example, and somebody orders a massive rug or a couch you probably don't want that same setup of shelves, and you might even want a lift gate to be able to you know, bring a heavy item down, or a washing machine, for example. So there are a ton of applications outside of the van configuration with, with shelves that are still doing uh, inner city delivery runs or regional runs, um, and that's what the, the MD and XD platforms aim to solve. So when I was looking through your website, I noticed that Exos designs, manufactures, purpose-built electric vehicles, the ones we've been talking about. You design uh, software like the Exosphere and then even do charging infrastructure. And so like, right, I think historically 
you wouldn't see a traditional automaker build their cars, build GPS, and their fueling stations. Yeah, well, you picked up on something really important, which is we're, we're not a traditional automaker. One of the problems that we were running into in talking to fleets is the time it takes to get charging infrastructure installed. So a fleet might say, hey, I want five trucks in my LA location, I'm ready to go. And we'll go out and look and say, hey, you don't have enough power at your facility to charge five trucks at the same time. And we'll initiate a process in speaking with the local utility to get a power upgrade on their site. But that could take anywhere from you know, three to six to 12 months. And so we designed a mobile charging station to bridge that gap between a customer wanting to get their truck running to getting permanent charging infrastructure installed. And what it is, is a, essentially a, a bank of batteries with charging infrastructure that we can drop in a parking lot, hook up to the grid with a lower power kind of trickle charge connection so that the hub is charging throughout the day. And when the five trucks come back in the afternoon, you can plug them in and charge them at you know, 20 kilowatts plus uh, all at the same time. So I know we have a full day ahead of us. I would still love a chance to see the HDXT I'll have parked out. Um, and then hopefully later on, I can help you all out with some of the uh, XCAP events you'll have going on. Let's do it. All right. Thanks. We're out here in front of headquarters looking at Exos's new HDXT platform. It packs a mean punch with 798 horsepower and over 36,000 foot-pounds of torque. So it's uh, more powerful, more torquey than any other commercial vehicle on the market today. And we package that together with uh, proprietary Exos batteries, part of what we design and develop in-house, and an e-axle from Allison which is a really exciting new partnership for us. So this is typically where you'd have like your diesel tank, for example, right. on, on a diesel truck. And we replace that with the battery pack. There's another one on the other side and more battery in the middle. So the range on this vehicle is roughly? Fully electric range of 230 miles. We have an e-axle on this truck. This relatively compact system replaces an entire diesel engine and transmission. So if you look under the hood of a diesel truck, you'll see this, you know, monstrous piece of equipment that takes up that entire hood area right. um, and it's replaced with a, a pretty tight package back here. Gio, obviously a pleasure being able to see so much. I guess we can go ahead and kick off XCAP and help the local community. Let's do it. Thanks so much for coming. Of course. Meanwhile, Matt manages to escape his camera duties to join the XCAP sandwich making crew. Matt, tell us what we're making today. So as you can see here, we have an assembly line going on. This side of the table, we're making ham sandwiches with mayo and mustard. Goes on to the meats, the cheese. Then they're adding lettuce and tomato at the end. And right now, I'm just passing bread out. That's, I guess, my job right now. The other side of the table is making PB and J's. What kind of peanut butter do they have over there? Do they have the chunky or the smooth? I see both, creamy and crunchy. You gotta satisfy everybody. As everyone at Exos filed into the room to help make sandwiches, I caught up with Winter Fate Morvant to learn just what is XCAP. XCAP is the Exos Community Action Program. Okay. And what we do in XCAP is we kind of gather up all of our resources and see how we can have an impact in the communities that we serve. It's kind of interesting and nice to see that y'all are doing something you're doing that, you're tackling that with your day job, but then as far as social causes, you're addressing other issues like you know, homelessness. We kind of like to have a wide variety of, of, of causes that we support, and our last initiative was with an amazing dog rescue group called I Stand With My Pack. We got to bring puppies into the <laughs> office. It was cuteness the best overload. thing. It was cuteness <laughs> overload. Everyone just had the best day ever. Call us back for that one. We, we will. <laughs> You'll be here. Play with those we'll puppies. How would you describe the primary objective of what XCAP accomplishes? We feel it's our social responsibility to be good, you know, to do good and to inspire good. Yeah. So, you know, why stop here, you know? Right. Let's, let's put it out into the world. With that, I was now officially part of XCAP and ready to deliver the goods. All right, so we're firing up the set band here, and this is our, uh, our flagship product. It's a class six delivery van, and we're off. You ready? Nice, yeah. All right. All right. No loud 
engine or anything like that. I already like it. Drivers love that. They love not having a diesel engine. Oh, kind I of believe it. Drowning out their radio or, or, or you know, hearing the road yeah. all day long. When we first started the business, a lot of people said, look, motors and battery packs are too small. They're too inefficient. You can't move heavy things with them. Right. And we kept doing the math and saying, these are actually a much more efficient, this is actually a much more efficient technology than a diesel engine, especially for the use cases that we're after. So does it make sense to build an electric tractor to do, you know, a thousand miles and drive across the country on a single charge? Probably not today. I think the technology is improving and, and eventually uh, you might get there. But for applications like this, where uh, our parcel delivery customers might only be doing, you know, 40 to 100 miles a day. Is that typical? It, yes. In New York City, you might only do 15 miles a day right. and go back to the depot. Sure. In Los Angeles, you're probably doing, you know, 60 to 80 miles. Okay. And then in more rural routes, you'll push toward 100 and 150. So regardless of basically, if you're doing last mile delivery, no one's really pushing the limits of your battery range, which if I believe is 170 miles? Yeah, absolutely. And it's modular. So if a customer doesn't need 170 miles, we can set them up with battery packs that only do 100 and they save, okay. they don't have to carry around that oh, extra okay. weight and pay that extra cost for batteries. When you're like, your job is suddenly improved by the quieter vehicle, the smoother vehicle, the cleaner vehicle. I mean, what's the feedback you hear from some of your customers on the driver's side? Yeah, for drivers that have been driving diesel for all their lives, I, at first, there's definitely a little bit of skepticism when they hear electric truck, right? But once they get into the vehicle and they get a chance to drive, um, it's pretty quick that the electric vehicles in the fleet become the ones that drivers are fighting over because they're so much quieter, they're so much easier to drive, it's just a better drive, driving experience overall. Younger drivers or folks that are newer to driving love electric vehicles yeah. and, and kind of don't have that that history with diesel built in. Right. So I know we're obviously dropping off some goods that your team's prepared for Essentia. I think y'all packed over like 150 sandwiches. Yeah, I'm super <laughs> proud of the team you and everybody, you know, diving in and helping out here. And, you know, it's important that we practice what we preach. Being able to uh, help out, getting our employees engaged in the community is a, a really important part of what it means to, to operate a business. Well, let's uh, hand these goods off to Essentia. All right. I can take one of those cases of water. Let's roll. I don't think we often understand the true depths of the story behind homelessness. What do you attribute to the, some of the main causes? Is it in fact mental health? affordability even. In order to afford housing in LA, a person needs to make work full time and make $40 an hour. So, you know, do the math. One thing, obviously, like I said, seeing it firsthand is different. And while it's humbling to see the work y'all are doing, it's also difficult to see what's actually happening. And so what I would love to know is what can any of our viewers do to help Essentia, just overall, really the homelessness problem happening all across America. Number one, do your research and educate yourselves and vote. Yeah, um, very important. Number two, if you want to get involved, um, just to reach out, contact uh, our website, uh, essenciaca.org. That will lead you into, you can sign up for our newsletter, and then from there, there are places to sign up for volunteer opportunities, places to donate. You could donate time, goods and services, they're called in-kind donations. We're even getting set up for cryptocurrency now. Oh, wow. As I step back for a moment and take in what I experienced today, I can't help but feel optimistic by all the people working behind the scenes, delivering solutions to address the issues affecting our world and communities. I got to learn how commercial fleets are thinking about electrification while experiencing and hearing all about the products Exos is bringing to market. On top of that, we got to experience how the Exos family gets involved in their local community through working with organizations like Essentia. I always consider myself lucky to get an inside look at leading electric vehicle companies and the impactful work they do. I can't wait to see more electric delivery trucks rolling through our neighborhoods.
hope you like this episode. Be sure to comment below and let us know your favorite part about the episode, any questions you have, or if you'll be ordering an Exos truck. And if you like the editing done by Matt, be sure to give us a like. And most importantly, be sure to subscribe. Subscribe? Subscribe. Yeah. Matt, you mind helping me with the editing? Subscribe.